Hello, everybody. Um, Welcome to the first... Sleepy Duck Vlog! The Sleepy Duck Vlog, inspired by... The sleepy vlog. Yeah, the sleepy vlog, <laughs> but... But going to be much better? Yeah, it's going to be much better. With <laughs> Quacking Duck. Quacking Duck, everybody. Um, so what have you been up to lately? Um, well, today I visited my grandpa. Um, uh, and... So... Yeah, I visited my grandpa, and of course, I went to England with my dad, Sleepy Reader, and Mrs. Mrs. Sleepy, Sleepy Reader, Reader. <laughs> as she is called. And what did you think of England? I thought it was pretty cool. Pretty Would much you... as cool as Portland. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Would you want to visit there again? I would want to go there maybe in a few years, yes. Uh -huh. And you met another comic book YouTuber. Do you remember who? La Rasa. Did you like meeting La Rasa? Yes. Um, Dad probably talked about her already in another yeah, video. Sorry. She was a bit upset that I did it all in another video already. <clears throat> Not upset upset, yeah. but it inspired her to want to do her own vlog. Yeah, I wanted to do it with her. So. So. So, um... Lately, we have been reading th these big volumes of Peanuts that have been like two years. Two years complete. Two years complete. Complete two years worth of Peanuts. Two years in worth each of volume. Peanut strips. And we usually read them at bedtime, sometimes yeah, other bedtime. times of the day. And so we started with 1950. Whoa! We start with 1950, yeah, and what date are we up to now? And now we are up to 1967. So we've read 16 years worth of peanuts yeah. so far. So, um, and here is the volume we are about finished with. Actually, we're about 1966, but soon to be 1967. I don't know why I say 1967 like that, but I did. Was uh, 1967 a good year for, or 1966 a good year for you? I said it was 1967. No, it wasn't. I wasn't alive then. Ah, uh, right. Was it a good year for you? I can barely remember it, but I think it was a good year. 1967. <laughs> Nin 1967. No. <clears throat> I just can't help saying 1967 now. So, lately we have been making paper crafts. Should I hold up one? Or do you want to pick? So, these are pretty cool. She just made this Wonder Woman while visiting her grandfather. Yeah. I'm going to hold it a little and closer the to the camera. Hair. It's a little hard to get on. You said the hair and the tiara, tiara were hard to get on. You want to turn it around again so they can see the tiara? It's pretty cool. It's a nice art style from Art Balthazar and Franco. Mostly right. Art Balthazar. Mostly Art Balthazar. It's hard it's to say Balthazar. Balthazar. It's Art Balthazar, not Franco. I'm just so used to them working together. Right. And there are a few others. Um, starting with, boom, boom. There's this Aquaman one. Dad put together it. It was, it was hard, hard to, to get together. the A on his belt. That yeah. Was the hardest thing. At first, Dad had it as a V. Va I put it up. Aquaman. <laughs> Here's one that was kind of hard. Do you want to show this one? It's cool, though. Lois Lane. Okay, so. Do you want to show Supergirl, even though she's kind of injured? Yeah. We ha her head won't stay on. <laughs> yeah, so we ended up taping it. So she is nearly headless Supergirl. Ne like nearly headless Nick in uh, Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. See? 
should probably attach her head on again. Though, Let's you would think that. this kind of thing would not happen to her. Kryptonite must have been involved. Okay. Catwoman. She's pretty cool. She's waving. And the goggles are really hard to get on. I am warning you. If you ever get this... Who's Black Canary? A uh, creation of moms. She's pretty good at these. Do you, uh, is this your favorite villain? No. Here is Lex Luthor. Who is your favorite villain? I don't really have one. I kind of like okay. Catwoman. Catwoman, if she's a villain. Yeah. I like her. <clears throat> if she's a villain. And he has kryptonite, of course, and sort of underwear on the outside. <laughs> um, I want to show some of the pets. There's Cyborg and Batman. Dad finally made Batman. I never made any of the men. Mom made this one, and Dad made this one, of course. <laughs> Batman. Bat. <laughs> hey, you were doing more of the Superman thing. <laughs> this is a job for Batman, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Batman had his face on his symbol on his chest? Yeah, just like the dad shirt. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, what else? Uh, you want to show the pets or do you want to? So, here's a pet. Ooh. Pet. Of course, Superman's pet. Um, Supergirl's pet. Um, Catwoman's pet. Zatanna's pet. Batman's pet. Ace the Bat Hound. Ace the Bat Hound. <laughs> um, uh, Marvel Bunny. Mm. Hoppy, I think is his name. Hoppy, yeah, Hoppy. I just call him that because he's sort and of. And last but probably least. <laughs> Last, but probably almost least, is Lex Luthor's lizard. Does anyone remember Lex Luthor having a pet lizard? Yeah, who and also I'm not sure likes what his kryptonite. Name is. Yeah, and why is he holding kryptonite? Well, he's a lizard. Maybe he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> okay, should we show them this giant tome? <laughs> This giant tome of Supergirl, Supergirl, Supergirl the Silver, Silver Age. Age, Volume One. We've been reading. We haven't quite finished, so yeah, and we've been reading since last we've August. We've been reading and reading. Can you tell tell them whose book it is? It's me and Dad's. Did you get it for my birthday? Yes, I did. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of mom. So um, it starts with the first appearance of Supergirl in Action da, da, da. Comics. <laughs> it's a boat. It's a plane. Wait, is that super red? <laughs> Why do and I keep by saying, I uh, like uh, page five, he's already sending her off to the orphanage. Yeah, because she knows like all about the superpowers, and she even knows he's Superman with his with her super telescope on Krypton. Right, on Argo. Argo City. Um, yeah. So, and, and I guess for maybe about the first year and a half's worth of comics, she's at the uh, orphanage and then she gets yeah. adopted by the she Danvers. She's adopted by the Danvers. But you like it better when she's in the orphanage. Yeah, I like, right? and I've sort of made up my own adventures of her at the orphanage. Right. And how Superman doesn't want her to show in public, so he gets all the credit. But then she does show herself in public. And, and this, this is, is one of your favorite fairy stories. Godmother. It's like my favorite story. What? Some boys at the orphanage don't believe in fairy godmothers, so and they're ruining it for the younger kids. So she dresses herself up as a fairy godmother and uses her superpowers to fake magic 
Three magic wishes for the doubt the boy that's doubting her. And there's one where she uh, turns this rabbit into a horse. Yeah, so that really turns. She um uh gets this rope and she like unravels the rabbit's cage and then she grabs the horse and then at the end she blows the horse with her super breath. She uses her super breath to poor blow the horse back horse. to the stable where it came from. Really poor, the poor horse. horse. What an experience for that horse. But she does successfully convince the boy that yeah. fairy tales are real. But she does not Even successfully though at convince At the end, she has to use super horse. hypnotism on everyone to make them think it was a dream and not real. Did you know about super hypnotism? I never knew about it before this. Me neither. So, um, other than her flying, what's the superpower she uses the most? Super ventriloquism. She uses vent super ventriloquism also, all the time. Also, X-ray vision and super strength. Right, but super ventriloquism most of all. With telescopic vision and a lot of her other visions. Microscopic vision, heat vision, whatever other ones there's probably not. And what what's the theory we developed as to why Superman keeps making herself keep herself secret? Uh, that um, Superman is like thinking that he should get all the attention, but then later on he actually broadcasts Supergirl on TV to the world. Right, and reveals that she exists, and then she can. Before that, she has to secretly do good deeds by <sighs> hiding behind clouds or. Digging under the earth where no one can see her going by. Yeah, uh, moving at a speed that the human eye cannot see, like the speed of light or something. And then a major character, well, should we talk about Dick Malvern? So, there's this guy called Dick Malvern. That's him gaining superpowers in this yeah. particular episode. So most of the time he doesn't have superpowers. Right. Dick Malvern. And he's kind of obsessed with Supergirl. Yeah. And he's dating Linda Lee Danvers. And he and he dates whoever he thinks is Supergirl. Right. When he stops <laughs> thinking that Linda Lee is Supergirl and decides that Lena Thorl, the Lena sister of Lex Luthor, is Supergirl, then he dumps. Um, Linda Lee and dates Lena Luther, Lena Thorl instead. And uh, Lena Thorl does has telepathic powers. Yeah, in this version. Yes. And but she doesn't know that she's Lex Luthor's sister. She grew up at the orphanage also. Maybe. So, um, we'll have to see what happens eventually to Lena if somehow she becomes evil yeah. or she stays good. Because she's good uh, at this point. What happens to Lena Luther? Um, and, and I'm wondering if, if she'll ever date Dick Malvern again. Guess what? At the first, I was always upset about the one and done stories. Now I don't like how everything like continues and continues right. and drags on. Maybe a two-part story would be nice. Three-part stories become pretty common towards the later stories. Yeah, I think it, uh, even four-part stories are like now. Right. And I think a two-part story would probably be a good length. Oh, and one of, so these bad guys come out of the uh, Phantom Zone, and one of them has this really great name. <laughs> Crew L. Crew L. Like <laughs> Kal L, but said Crew L. Which basically <laughs> is cruel. Cruel. But Crew L. Crew L. <laughs> Do they really realize it says cruel? It's cruel. Oh, and there's this evil girl from Kandor named uh, Les Lalar. Yeah, she keeps And she frees up. these criminals from the Phantom Zone, and they immediately disintegrate her. Yeah, they. So that was a really bad choice. <laughs> That's the only person who dies in uh, this entire book, this entire like 700 page book. Yeah, it's about 600. 600 page book. 650, maybe. And um, maybe 700. So I wonder if they ever brought Les Lalar back. She also looks exactly like Supergirl. No one, if she yeah. dresses up in a Supergirl outfit, no one can tell it's not Supergirl. Yeah, I mean, like. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. 
So we've been having a lot of fun reading Peanuts, reading Supergirl, reading tons of other comics that I guess we're not going to talk about tonight. Yeah. And I can smell chocolate chip cookies baking in the distance. Yes. Or in the not too distant Mrs. distance. Mrs. Sleepy Reader is baking chocolate chip cookies. Now, bye everyone. Good night, good afternoon, good morning, or good Wherever you happen noon. to be. <laughs> yes. Thanks for stopping by.